Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson, I'm gonna be teaching you how to play minuet in G, although our arrangement is going to be in C major. Now, first off, I've gotta give big props to my friend Steven for playing this tune as a duet with me. Now, he's got a little tutorial on his YouTube channel if you wanna learn the bass part, so I'll go ahead and link that in the description box below. But let's take a moment to talk about the ukulele part. And I gotta say that the ukulele part is going to be perfect for the seasoned beginner. And there's a couple reasons why. First off, this is a great tune for working on timing. We're literally going to be glued to the metronome throughout this tune. And secondly, it's a great challenge for your left hand, specifically finger dexterity. We're gonna be playing out of a couple positions on the neck. Now, if you don't know what that means, no worries, we'll talk about it once the lesson starts. So keep that thought in mind. So let's go ahead and talk about the lesson. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to play the entire arrangement. But if you wanna get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's gonna be available at this link. Or you can go to the site, rockclass101.com and do a search for Minuet NG. Now also on that page will be the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish. Just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. And last but not least, there is going to be a backing track. So if you want to play this alongside the bass as a duet, we're going to have a 100% speed and a 75% speed MP3 that you can download and rock out to at home with. All right, so let's go ahead and kick into learning how to play this. First off, there's a few things we wanna talk about. The first thing is the big elephant in the room. This arrangement is for low G, so make sure you grab your low G ukulele to follow along with. Now secondly, we wanna talk about what time signature we're playing out of, which is three, four. So that means that we have three beats per measure, quarter note gets the beat. So we're literally gonna be counting one, two, three, then the next measure, one, two, three, next measure, and so forth. So let's talk about our right hand approach for finger picking. Now I'm gonna be using what's called piccato picking, which is fancy terminology that literally means alternate picking. So for example, if we take our A string, I want you to pluck it once with your middle finger and then pluck it again with your index finger. Now take note of my thumb as well. I've got my thumb resting on the fourth string, okay? So again, I'm going middle, index. So the key here is to lead with the middle, follow with the index, and we can rest our thumb on the fourth string. So just take a moment and vamp on that A string, middle index, middle index, and so forth, just to get comfortable doing this. You can switch to the second string and the third string if you wish. Now, the reason we're gonna be doing piccato picking is because it makes our picking hand extremely efficient. So look at how much effort it takes to just vamp on the A string. Now compare that to one finger. I gotta work twice as hard to play at the same speed. Okay, so if you're new to piccato picking, uh, I want you to uh, just Hit pause on this video. You can run a couple times on the A string, a couple times on the E string, a couple times on the C string, just to kind of get comfortable and used to it. But if you want to dive deeper into this picking technique, then go ahead and check out our flamenco lesson. It's called La Hitanita. I'll put a card there and I'll link it in the description box below. It breaks this uh, concept down in greater detail and you get to learn a really fun flamenco tune along the way. But the last thing I wanna mention about the right hand approach is that anytime we have a note on the fourth string, since our thumb is pretty much just gonna be resting there, we can just use our thumb to hit those notes. 
Okay. Now, if you don't like Mikado picking, you can use any other kind of traditional finger picking method. So feel free to do that. I'm just suggesting what I think is the most efficient way to play, especially if you want to play this tune at a little bit of a brisker tempo. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into learning how to play this tune. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up the entire first line of tab right here. So we've got measures one through four. But as we work on this tune, we're going to be learning two bars at a time. So go ahead and just narrow in your focus to the first couple measures. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play these first two bars so we can get that melody stuck in our head as if we probably don't already know this. This is one of those songs that you hear it once and it's stuck in your head and you've probably heard it all your life. But I digress. Here's the first couple bars. Let's take a listen, then we're going to break it down and learn it, plus talk about playing in position number one. So the first two bars sound like this. Okay, so let's break down what's happening. Now first off, I'm going to play it again, and I want you to watch my left hand. Okay, we notice that if I had a note on the third fret, I used my ring finger. If I had a note on the second fret, I used my middle finger. If we had a note on the first fret, I used my index finger, regardless of what string I was playing on. And that's the first thing that we have to learn, is that we're playing in what's called open position, or sometimes folks like to call it position one. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a uniform uh, one to call it. I've heard both uh, names being used. But essentially, you can see what it means is this. I'm going to be assigning a finger per fret across all four strings. So take a moment to do this with me. Let's get rid of this tablature. And I want you to just go ahead and place your index on the first fret of string four. Play that note. Use your middle for the next fret, so the second fret. Then your ring for the third fret. And then your pinky for the fourth fret. Then go to the string underneath, so drop down to the third string. Same thing. Two, three, four, drop down. One, two, three, four, drop down. And let's run it backwards. Four, three, two, one, move up. Four, three, two, one, move up. And move up. So take a moment and you can. across all four strings, all four frets. So that's first position. So we're literally assigning a finger per fret across all four strings. So the key takeaway here is that any time you see a note that falls on the third fret across all four strings, you're going to use your ring finger. Any time you see a note that falls on the first fret across all four strings, use your index finger. Anytime you see a note that falls on the second fret, you use your middle finger. If you see one on the fourth fret, you're going to use your pinky. So that makes it really efficient to play. So if I play just this first line of tab, watch my left hand. It gets assigned a finger per fret. Now that's a lot more efficient than if I was to go something like that, where I have to kind of do a lot of movement with my left hand. So that's essentially playing in a position. I like to call it playing in a box, uh, but essentially it just makes your left hand really efficient. And it's an easy way to memorize, or an easy way to know which finger to use. Okay? So for all of melody A, which is 16 bars in length, we're going to be playing out of this open, aka first position. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back into learning the first couple bars. So start with our ring finger on the third fret of string two. We're going to play that note, and then we're going to play the open C, followed by the second fret on the C string, and then the open E, and then the first fret on the E string. Okay? And rhythmically, we have one, two, and three, and... So we have a quarter followed by eighth notes. Okay? So three, oh, two, oh, one. You can also call out the fret names if you wish. That works just as well. 
But if we look at the second measure, we're going to go to the third fret with our ring, right? And then finish up with two open Cs. Okay, so think of this song as two bar phrases, right? We've got Very, very catchy, right? One, two, and three, and one, two, three. So let's see if you and I can try that together. Here we go. One, two, and three, and one, two, go. Okay. Now, if we look at our next couple bars, this is what it's going to sound like. So we're going to start with our open A string, and then we're going to walk a melody line up the second string. So first fret, third fret, back to the open A, and to our second fret on the A string. Okay, so for this third measure we have, and you can see we're utilizing our position, right, playing out of that box that we talked about. Going into the fourth measure, use your ring finger for the third fret, and then end on two open Cs again. So notice that the fourth bar is identical to the second bar in that it ends on open Cs. So again, for our third measure, we have open, A, first, third on the E string, back to open A, second fret, then going into measure four, we have the third fret and two Cs. Okay, so let's see if we can try three into four. Sounds like this. Okay, and you and I will try. We'll go a little bit slower for this one. One, two, and three, and one, two, go. And if we backtrack, let's try one into four. So here we go. One, two, and three, and one, two, go. Nice. So, so far, not too, too hard, right? If we go into our fifth through eighth measure, let's take a look at that now. So we're going to be kicking off on a movement that goes up, but down in pitch, right? So start with your index finger on that first fret of string two, go to the third fret, and then back to the first. So notice that I keep my index finger anchored the entire time. So once I play this first fret, I keep it down, play the third fret, then lift up, and I've still got my index finger anchored. After that, I'm gonna lift up, play the open E, and then go to the second fret on the third string with my middle finger. Okay, so I've got one, three, one, open second. Okay, going into our sixth measure, we're starting with an open E, back to the first fret on that E string, Lift up, open E again, and back to the middle finger on the second fret of string three to the open C. So a lot of open notes in this measure. We have O, one, O, two, O. So E, F, E, D, C. If we call out the notes, or we can call out the frets again. Open, one, O, two, O. Okay. But if you look at five and six rhythmically, they're the same. So one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and. So that makes it easy to memorize. So let's see if we can try five into six, nice and slow. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and. Nice. Going into our seventh and eighth. Now here's the first time that we use our pinky finger, right? So you can see that we start with the fourth fret of the fourth string. So use your pinky for that. 
And then we're going to go back to the open C, to the middle finger on the second fret of the C, to the open E, then lift up, open C. It's a lot of open notes again. So the hard thing here is just getting that pinky finger. So pinky on four on string four, then O, two, O, O. So one, two, and three, and. If we look at measure eight, we start with an open E, and then end on the second fret of the C string. Look at the rhythm for measure eight though. It's one, two, three, so a little bit different rhythm right there. So we have quarter, half, okay? If I play seven into eight, one, two, and three, and one, two, three, that's what we end up with. Now remember, I'm going to be using my thumb to play every note that falls on the fourth string, but piccato picking throughout the rest of it, okay? So let's see if we can try seven into eight. Nice and slow. One, two, and three, and one, two, go. Okay, if we backtrack, let's see if we can try five into eight. So here we go. One, two, three, one, two, go. How did you do? So that gives us our first half of the A melody. So if I cycle through those eight measures, this is what it sounds like so far. Okay, very, very beautiful, very, very catchy melody. Now, here's the beauty. The next six bars, so measure 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, they're identical to measures 1 through 6. So everything is 100% the same. So what happens that's different is the last two bars for melody A. So measure 15 and 16 is going to be different. So let's do this. Let's put up the tab for 13 to 16, and I'm gonna go ahead and play this entire four bars so that you can hear what the ending sounds like. So remember, the first two are the same. We already know how to play that, but let's listen to it in context so we can hear what the ending is. So zoom in on 15 and 16, and let's go ahead and break down what's happening. So we're gonna be starting with the second fret of the C string. So go ahead and play that note for me. And then I want you to play the open E, back to the second fret. You can see that I just kept my middle finger anchored the entire time, since we're coming right back to it. After that, I'm gonna lift up, play the open C, back to the fourth fret on the fourth string with my pinky and then back to the open C. Okay, that's gonna be the last note for measure 16, and the only note in measure 16. So we have two, oh, two, oh, four, oh, rhythmically. One, two, and three, and one, two, done. So not too, too hard. Let's see if we can try together. One, two, go. So, Melody A is so easy to play because there is a huge copy and paste that happened, right? Those first six bars that you learned, they were copied and pasted for measure 9 through 14. So learning these first 16 bars in Melody A is really easy because six of them got repeated. So technically, you only have to learn 10 bars right? So melody A is going to be a lot easier to play and a lot easier to memorize than what's coming up in melody B. 
But let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna go ahead and just insert a little clip of Melody A played in the duet so we can hear the entire section performed alongside to the bass and you can hear everything put together for what you've learned so far. So the first 16 bars of the tune. Okay, so jumping into Melody B. Now Melody B is gonna be a little bit more challenging in terms of what our left hand is doing. Now we're going to be playing in position two for most of this melody, but we don't start that until bar two, or technically bar 18. So let's do this. Let's uh, put up the tab for the first four, so 17 through 20. I'm gonna go ahead and play 17 and 18 so we can hear what we're about to learn. So it sounds like this. Okay, so starting with 17 by itself, it's going to be a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna give you two ways to play it. So go ahead and start with your pinky on the seventh fret of string one. Then I want you to use your index finger to play the third fret on string one middle finger to play the fifth fret on string one, back to seven with the pinky, and then back to index for the third. So memorize those frets. You've got seven, three, five, seven, and then back to three. So we've got pinky, index, middle, pinky, index, okay? Now this way of playing it is tricky because it's a stretch chord, so Stretch meaning that we have some reach required from our index to our pinky finger. And that's not really easy to do for beginner players. Now, if you've not played a stretch chord, stretch lick, stretch phrase, anything that requires you to have a bit of reach with your pinky finger, and you wanna work on increasing the reach of your left hand, then I'd recommend checking out this lesson that we've done. It's called Increasing Left Hand Reach but it's gonna give you three exercises that you can run and they work great for a daily warm up. And these three exercises, if you work on them every single day for a few months, you're gonna to start to notice that you're increasing the reach and anytime you have licks or chords or anything that requires you to have great reach, kind of like what we're doing right now, then that's gonna become a lot easier. So check out those exercises. I'll link it in the description box below. But going back into this, so we've got sev, three, five, sev, three. Now, if you don't like that stretch, here's a way that you can play it instead. You can start with the ring finger on seven, then just shift down to the third fret, use the ring finger again for five, move up, so shift up to sev, then shift back down to three. So sev, three, five, sev, three. So you can see I've got a little bit of movement happening with my left hand, which is totally fine. And that's gonna be a lot easier of a way to do it if you wanna avoid the stretch. But look at the, mo the movement of my left hand when I utilize the stretch. I literally stay in position, right? Sev, three, five, sev, three. Basically my index finger is anchored. Okay? So piccato picking, using the stretch, all this adds up to being more efficient in your playing. So that's why I wanna throw these ways of playing out at you guys, so you can start to become aware of how to make your playing much more efficient, which is really, really useful for when you start to play really fast songs. Okay, so that's our first bar. So you just wanna hit pause. It's the hardest measure we've tackled so far, I would say. And you just wanna work on that, but going into the 18th bar, it's going to sound and look like this. So in essence, it's kind of a continuation of the theme of the first bar, so the 17th bar. But the 18th measure is where we go into position number two. So position two literally means that we're doing the same thing 
we talked about at the beginning of the A melody, we're just assigning each finger starting on the second fret. So you've got two, three, four, five. So anytime you have a note that falls on the second fret across all four strings, use your index. Anytime you have a note that's on the third fret, use your middle. If you have one on the fourth fret, use your ring finger. If you have one on the fifth fret, use your pinky finger. Okay? So uh, as we work throughout the uh, majority of this melody B, we're going to be playing in position two, although sometimes we're going to break the rule of thumb. So we're going to use different fingers in a couple spots, and I'll tell you why. But keep position two in mind for right now. So go ahead and start with your pinky on five on the A string. Then with your middle finger, we're going to play the third fret of the second string. Open A. Index plays the second fret on the A. And back to the third fret on the E string. So five, three, oh, two, three. Okay, so just hit pause. You can practice that. It's a little bit tricky. And what I would do is I would hit pause as well and just practice seven and 17 into 18. Because it's kind of a hard transition going from 17 into 18. Let's try it together. One, two, and three, go. So definitely, I would say, the most challenging one that we've learned thus far. So again, hit pause if you need extra practice on that one. But let's go ahead and look at the next couple bars. So 19 and 20 will sound like this. OK, let's break down what's happening. So 19, we're still playing out of position number two. So you know which finger to use. So start on the third fret of the A string, lift up, play the open, go to the second fret, and back to the third fret. Okay, so three, oh, two, three. So all of that is played on the A string. And then for our last note, we can just move our middle finger up and play the third fret on the second string. Okay. Now one trick that I like to use is the pivot method. So watch my middle finger. So you can see at the end, I pivot my way up. So when I'm doing this, here's what's happening. Three, oh, two, three. When I go on to that third fret on the A string for the very last hit, I'm going to not be on fingertip like that. Instead, I'm going to be kind of laying flat, almost like it was a bar chord, right? Because if I lay flat like this, look at that first joint. It's flat, right? I can pivot up, that joint pops out, right? So if I pivot up and that joint pops out, I can get to this second string really easy. Now, you may be saying, well, why are you doing that instead of just lifting up? Because sometimes when you just move directly up, you get a little bit of unwanted string noise in the transition, aka maybe that A string kind of rings out a little bit and sounds kind of mu muddy in what you're playing. So if you do the pivot, cut down on any unwanted string noise ever happening. So it's hard and it takes time. It's kind of a really awkward thing to do. But again, this is another tip that really helps, especially for folks tr transitioning into intermediate level playing. All these are little tips that you can use. You know, piccato for increasing efficiency, stretch for not having move motion to, again, increase efficiency, and uh, muting unwanted sounds so we get a cleaner playing. So these are all little tips and tricks that you can throw into your uh, playing bag. So again, measure 19 by itself. Sounds like that. Going into measure 20. So 
here's where we're going to be breaking out of this position two, starting on the second note. So the first note, we're gonna go ahead and play the second fret with our index as if it's still position two. But to finish up this bar, we're going to lift our index finger up. We're going to play the open E, hammer on with the middle finger onto that second fret, and then use our index finger to play the second fret of string three. So we're breaking out of this second position, and I'll explain why once we go into the next measure. So again, let's recap bar 20. So we stay in position two for the first hit, second fret with the index finger, lift up, play the open E, hammer on with the middle finger, then use your index on top, second on string three. Okay? So take a moment just to get comfortable with that. And it sounds like that with rhythm. One, two, and three. So we've got quarter, eighth, quarter. Okay? So putting it in context, 19 into 20. Sounds like that. So let's see if we can try that together, slow. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three. Okay, let's try one more time. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three. Okay, now let's backtrack and let's try 17 through 20. One, two, and three, and one, two, and ready, go. Now, take a look at where we left off, right? So we're kind of making this D chord. Now, if we look at the next four bars, we're going to be playing out of this same chord, but we're going to be having a movement that goes straight down, okay? Now, watch what happens. I wanted to use these two fingers specifically because if you look at the first note, we li lift up from the middle finger, we just get rid of it, we don't need it right now, and we have our index finger in place to start this run. Okay, so that's kind of why we, in the previous bar, we kind of broke the rule of thumb and we used a different finger for that second fret. So it essentially just left you in position to start this run out of D major. So kind of a cool uh, way for setting us up for success with this bar. So this measure is not too hard. We're starting with the index finger, which was already there for the second fret of string three. Then we're gonna play the open E, second fret on the E string, third fret, open A, and then second fret. Okay, so let's see if we can try that. It's super, super easy. All eighth notes, so we have one and two and three and, so let's see if we can try that. One and two and three and one and two and Going into our next measure, 22, all quarter notes. So keep your index where it's at, keep it planted. Add your middle finger to the third fret. So pluck that, it's the A string, right? Then back to the index finger, and then do a pull off. Okay, now remember with pull offs, we wanna tug slightly down. We don't wanna lift directly up because the note doesn't ring enough. So we wanna come down a little bit. So if you're new to hammer-ons and pull-offs, I'm gonna put a link in the description box below to our introductory lesson that teaches you the mechanics behind doing them properly. But again, this measure is pretty simple. Keep your index finger anchored. We're gonna go three, two, pull off, all quarter notes, okay? So 21 into 22. Sounds like that. So let's see if we can try that together. One, two, three, one, two, go. Nice. So all of that, we're still playing out of position two, right? 
Going into our next couple bars, this is, again, we're going to kind of change, change our fingering approach a little bit, okay? So we're going to start with our middle finger on the second fret of the first string. Then we're going to use our index finger for the second fret of the third string. And then our middle finger for the second fret of the second string. So we're playing two, 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 right? But string one, string three, string two. Now we're breaking out of playing out of that position because we want to have our middle finger to go back into position two, beginning in measure 24. So let's recap again. Middle finger is on the second fret for the A string. Then we're going to use the index for the second fret of the third string. Then middle finger for the second fret of the second string. And then the next measure, just slide into it. So I want you to pluck the second fret and slide into the third fret. So if you zoom in on the 24th bar, you see that it's a tiny little two that has a, a dash with an S that means slide into the third fret. So that tiny little two is a grace note. And a grace note literally adds flourish. So instead of us going like that, it sounds a little bit cool, more hip to go. Right? Adds a little slide technique to there. And it's kind of like uh, putting a little bit of, a, you know, a pinch of salt on a, a dish you're about to eat. Sometimes all you need is a little pinch of salt to make it perfect, to make it pop and stand out. And that's what you get with a grace note. Just it adds a little extra pizzazz. Okay, so let's see if we can try those two bars together. We have one, two, three, slide, and that's going to last the rest of measure 24. So one, two, three, slide, two, go. So not too, too hard, right? One more time. One, two, three, slide, two, go. Two, three, nice. Now, if we backtrack 21 into 24, one, two, three, one, two, go. So if I backtrack and I play 17 through 24, this gives us a context of what we've learned for the first half of Melody B. Now going into our next four bars, let me go ahead and start with the first two. It's going to sound like this. So we're still playing out of position two for this first part. So start with your middle finger on the third fret. And that's where you left off, right? That third fret is string two. So you're gonna play that note, then the open C, then take your ring finger, play the fourth fret of the fourth string, and then back to the open C. So one, two, and three. If you look at the next measure, you can see that it's identical except for the first hit. You have the open A, but the rest of it is the same. So you've got three, O, oh, four, O, oh, A, O, oh, four, O. Oh. Okay, still playing in position two. Let's see if we can try that, but slow. So we have one, two, and three, one, two, and go. Okay, going into the next two bars. This is where we go back to that open, AKA first position. So take a look at what's happening with my left hand. All right, so you're back to the same position we did for all of A melody or melody A. So going back to the E string, we're gonna go three, one, oh. Very, very easy stuff. Going to the next bar, we've got two, pull off to the open C, then fourth fret with the pinky, 
back to open C, and then second fret. So this measure is a little bit trickier. So we've got pull off four o two. Okay, let's try just that bar by itself. Twenty eight. One and two and three. So let's try together. One and two and three go. Okay, if we backtrack 27 into 28, one, two, three, one and two and three, one, two, three, one and two and three. Nice. Now if we backtrack 25 through 28, remember the first two, position two, and then you're back to position one for the last two. So let's try that. One, two, three, one, two, go. Nice. Now if that's a little bit too fast, you can use that little cog on the YouTube player to slow it down. But Let's go ahead and take a look at our home run stretch. So the last four bars of the tune. Now you're going to have a run that kicks off these set of four. So kind of uh, similar to what we did with measure 21 into 22, although this time we're playing out of G. So start with the open fourth, go to the second fret, to the fourth fret, to the open C, to the second fret, to the open E. Keep in mind you're still in position one. Okay, now to finish up, we're going to go first fret, to the open E, to the second fret. So you notice that those three notes in measure 30, they are all quarter notes. So you have a run of eighth note, one and two and three and one, two, three, followed by quarter notes, okay? So not too, too hard. Let's see if we can try this one together. One and two and three and one, two, go. One and two and three and one, two, three. Nice. Now to finish up, we have Okay, so we're going to do a hammer-on, still in the same position, so position one. So you're going to go open to third on the E string, open C. Then I want you to use your middle finger to grab this fourth fret on the fourth string, okay? So try O hammer, open, four, just try that nice and slow. To finish up the last chord of this tune, or the only chord we're playing, is going to be a partial bar chord. Now if this is a little too hard for you, you can always just end the song on the open C, but let's see if we can try this chord shape. Take your index finger, lay flat on the third fret strings one and two, and then use your middle finger for the fourth fret of string three. So anytime we do a partial bar, notice that I'm flat at that first joint and flat up to the actual knuckle. If we look at what's happening behind the neck, we can see I have a nice U-shaped gap. My thumb is slightly above the middle of the neck. Now, if you've never heard this U-shaped gap or you've never thought about placement for your thumb, then I want you to check out our lesson on proper left-hand form. I'll put a link in the description box below, but it's going to break down proper form for partial bar chords, which means we bar across two strings, three strings, or if you want to do full bar chords, we cover that as well, so all four strings. And if you want to recap on basic, these cowboy chord shapes that you learn on day one of playing, we cover that in that lesson as well. So getting bar chords or partial bar chords to ring out, it all comes down to form and strength. So you want to make sure that you have proper form, that helps you build strength for keeping pressure down so that each note rings out crystal clear. So again, flat on three, strings one and two. Middle finger is the fourth fret of string three. And that's it. And we can actually pluck. 
this hit. Okay, so we have to end the tune. Rhythmically, one and two, three, one, two, done. Okay, let's see if we can try that slow. One, two, three, one, two, go. One and two, three, pluck. Nice. If I backtrack, 29 through 32. One, two, three, one, two, go. Nice. So if I play 25 through 32, this gives us a context of what the second half of melody B sounds like. This is what we get for the eight measures. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's take a listen now to just Melody B and then play it in its entirety in the context of the duet. So we'll listen to the last 16 bars that we learned, so 17 through 32. Alright guys, so that's going to be everything for this lesson. It's such a fun melody to play as a standalone ukulele piece, but it's even more fun to play as a duet. So I want to give you a friendly reminder that if you want to download the tabs and download the backing track, so play along with the bass, we've got it in two different speeds, 175%. You can get all of those assets by clicking this link or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for Minuet and G. Don't forget too on the page is the really cool interactive on-screen tab here. So you can literally hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed, all that fun jazz. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.